today I would like to tell you about a concept that changed my life. It happens when you learn new things, you change your mind, you see the world in a different way. And this happens in various ways. You can change your mind for so many reasons, for a shock, meeting someone or just reading a book. And this is the book that changed my life not long ago, a few months ago. It's uh, The Sym Symbiotic Planet by Lynn Margulis. And the curious thing is that uh, I had this book in my bookshelves for about 15 years. This book is was written, was published in 1998. And uh, I read it, I'm sure I did. Uh, maybe 15 years ago, but it changed my life when I r read it again a few months ago. Because in order to change, you have to be ready for the change. At some moment, you you are you are. So, what is this book about? This book introduces a concept which is the holobiont. Holobiont. Let me explain what it is. It's not in the title of the book. It's uh, in, the, in the text. And I don't think there, is, there are books with the title Holobion so far, but it will come because it is diffusing. It is becoming more and more popular. And it is a fundamental, it is becoming a fundamental concept in biology. It is the idea that you don't focus anymore on the concept of organism, you are a human being, I suppose most of you are human beings, and if you are a human being, you are supposed to be an organism. An organism has a specific DNA, genetic code, uh, and that's the focus of biology up, biology up to not long ago, the organism, the DNA of an organism. But the new vision, introduced in part by Lynn Margulis, but not just by her, is the new vision is that you are a holobiont, you are a system, you are made not just of the human part of what you are, but you are also formed of biome, of a biome, a, a, a colony, you are a colony of many organisms, you are, you, we all are, all human beings are, all animals are, because we humans have at least one kilogram and a half of bacteria in our guts, plus more bacteria, viruses, microorganisms of all sorts on our skin, on all over the, the body. And that's the concept of holobiont. A holobiont is an ensemble of creatures which collaborate, symbi symbiosis. And that's already, it's a fundamental concept that tells you how to be healthy because if you are a holobiont, you have to be a good holobiont, and then you have to take care of your sim sim symbionts, the bacteria you have in your guts. You have to take care of them, and it starts to be known. There's another book that may change your life if you have time to read it, Missing micro Microbes, that if your microbiome is not good, it's not well kept, it is not a variety that they should have, as it happens, then you'll be sick and lots of us are sick because our microbiome is not healthy. And it is becoming more and more known that uh, you, it is not so simple to cure a person, you have a symptom, you take a pill and then you're supposed to be um, healed. but. Uh, we start having, seeing that uh, this is not a good way to go because the pills we take, and we all take pills, lots of pills, they, they cure the symptoms, but usually have <laughs> side effects, which may be worse. Long story. But let not me tell you about that. The point is that this holobiont idea gave to Lynn Margulis, one of the best minds, I think, of the 20th century, a chance to correct something that another great mind, but of one century before, Charles Darwin, had developed. You know, 
long ago. The origin of a species, the theory of evolution by natural selection. This is the book by Darwin, you know this. This is a major, a major milestone in human thought. This is 1859. And uh, the importance of this book is that it was the first attempt, the first step at understanding what is a complex system. Now, that's another term which is fashionable right now. What is a complex system? Let me tell you how you recognize a, co a complex system. You take it, you kick it. If it doesn't kick back, it is not complex. If it kicks back, it is. A defi good definition of complex systems is a system that kicks back. Try it, kick a soccer ball and it will go in the direction you kicked it. Kick a dog, it will bite you, kick a person, it will kick back. Mm. It is normal because you're starting to understand what is a, a system, a complex system, a system in dynamic equilibrium. A complex system uses energy to destroy entropy. It's a thermodynamic um, system which tends to maintain its condition. Like you, like me. I mean, when I'm sitting here, I'm maintaining my temperature, my metabolism, my my consume of substances, everything. I am. I am. I suppose you are too. A complex system. And the correct term is homeostasis. Homeostasis means that complex systems maintain their condition. That's fundamental for what we call the ecosphere, or sometimes the biosphere, the whole Earth. And uh, the whole system, the beauty of the system is that it maintains its condition, maintains its state. And it does so, does that, because it is a complex system. And it's complex system do that, exactly that. They use energy to maintain their condition. And that's the point, it's the point of the whole bio. So evolution, we start to understand, is not exactly what Darwin had said. Darwin had, had seen well a lot of things, but he didn't know everything. So he, his ideas were still uncertain, they need to be refined, and then the evolution theory went through various stages. It went, it went through a first stage of rejection. People said, oh, it's, uh, where, where did you get this idea? It's stupid. Don't, don't, we, don't, we cannot believe that man descended from apes, which Darwin had never said. But then it was retaken. It became neo-Darwinism. Neo-Darwinism, it's uh, based on molecular biology, which is a good idea. But then there, is, there was always a problem. Natural selection is okay. What is not good is the idea of survival of the fittest. You heard that. Because uh, some people understood evolution as a sort of race, a race in which the best wins. So the evolution of the fittest, they see some idea, some people or some animals or some creatures are better than others. And so those which are better, better um, win the race, they reproduce, and the others no, don't. But it is not like that. Evolution is not a race. Evolution, if you like it, is the Red Queen's race. You know the story of, um, that uh, the, the Red Queen runs to remain in the same place. The a system, a biological system, a holobiont, actually, we'll go more into that in a moment, runs to stay in the same place. The biological system, species, uh, um, creatures, um, groups or tribes or whatever, they rush, they run to keep stable. Evolution is about stability, not about improvement, not necessary, it may happen, but the system strives for stability. And those systems which are stable are those which survive. So that's a, the point. If you don't understand this point, you misunderstand 
that we see, or you will think that there are some creatures which or humans which are superior to superior to the others, then it will start saying uh, the white race, uh, the white uh, man's burden, as Kipling said, and and then you start with racism, racism, and uh, and uh, um, exterminations, uh, ethnical ethnical cleansing, all the rest. You can have a lot of fun with that, but it's not nothing to do with Darwin, nothing to do with evolution, nothing to do with the way ecosystems work. Ecosystems are based on collaboration, interaction, and symbiosis. Symbiosis. That's what what Lynn Margulis said. It is evolution, it's not a competition. It is mixing together, exchanging information. Symbiosis and then you get from uh, two different creatures, you get them together, you get a holobiont, and that what survives. That's the stability unit of the whole system. And you see what Lynn Margulis did, <laughs> her career was to concentrate on a fundamental problem of evolution, which um, it's difficult to explain by standard competition, and it is how complex creatures arise from simple creatures. So, a big problem, how do eukaryotes arise from prokaryotes? You know that prokaryotes are bacteria mainly, and archaea also, creatures without small cells without a nucleus, and eukaryotes are bigger or anyway more complex we are made of eukaryotes and how do the how does it happen that the competition among um, prokaryotes simple simple creatures competing they would become more complex they would become uh, eukaryotes very difficult to understand but margulis had this idea say okay how does it happen it happens because one cell someday ate another cell, both non-structured cells, but instead of digesting the smaller cell, the larger cell kept it inside and uh, so the two creatures started adapting to each other. This is called endosymbiosis, endosymbiosis, symbio internal symbiosis. It's uh, it's a fundamental concept, it's very interesting, very fundamental, you can understand, it's very new, so it took a lot of time for biologists to accept that evolution, the evolution of uh, eukaryotes happens because some cell wants to eat another cell. But that is the origin of collaboration, because instead of fighting, some moment you find that uh, well maybe it's better to collaborate and so you progress you move on and that was one of the fundamental ideas that margulis produced over her career and uh, this is fundamental beautiful interesting and effective because once you have this idea or the idea of the holobiont that you are a holobiont you understand that the holobiont is a concept, a wide-ranging concept, because you are a holobiont, but even society, human society, is a higher order holobiont, and human society is part of an even higher order holobiont, which is the what we call the environment, but which is the biosphere, because we need, as humans, we need all sorts of creatures in um, plants and animals and things to survive so it is part of a larger system which is itself another hol holobiont which is part of another even larger system and you go you go you go and the last the, up, the biggest not the top the big holobiont of all is the whole ecosystem the whole ecosystem which has this property just like all other holobiots, to stay stable, to maintain stability as much as possible. In, the in face of some kind, some perturbations will be absorbed, 
some will be reacted against kickback and sometimes the system will be destabilized you know the story of the ecosystem involves great extinctions and uh, disasters and and, um, and many destabilizations of the whole system but the ecosystem survived and one another great contribution of Lynn Margulis was to work together with James Lovelock whom you probably know as the originator of the concept of Gaia Gaia the goddess it's not a goddess Gaia is a name that we give to the capability of the ecosystem to maintain its homeostasis, its stability. It does. It works. It exists. You cannot deny it. Maybe you we can discuss whether you can worship Gaia. Some people do. It may not be a bad idea, but at its basis, the idea of Gaia is very simple and very sound. Gaia is not different than me and you. It's a, just a higher order creature, which different properties, different capabilities, different size, but it is not different, it is another holobiont. See, once you have this concept, you understand a lot of things, you understand how the system stabilizes itself. Let me show you another book that tells you similar things, Biotic Regulation of the Environment. This is not an easy book to read, this was written by two Russian researchers. Um, Anastasia Makarieva, Viktor Goshkov, and his son Vadim Goshov. Um, it says, tells you that the whole system is optimized in such a way to maintain stability, not just in the interactions among creatures, individuals. The system controls, according to the biotic regulation concept, the whole system controls also the environment. There's no real difference between the environment and the creatures which populate it. It is the same thing. It is the, it is the ecosystem, which is a complete interaction, correlation, and, and uh, mixing, if you like, of the biosphere, the geosphere, the hydrosphere, the um, atmosphere, and all these kind of things. It, the whole thing is stable if you don't push it too much but as long as you do that you will see that the name of the game is not competition as some um, and some ways of understanding darwin's theory it's all some people understood it all based on competition no that's only in some con in some conditions yes and there is a question of competition, but normally the essential of uh, evolution is collaboration. You exchange data, holobiont to holobiont, we exchange data with each other as, as organic biological holobionts. You exchange data with other holobionts by having sex with them that's a way to exchange genetic information or simply touching each other means that you exchange part of your biome your skin biome you exchange it and you pass information from one holobiont to, to another and that's the way evolution goes by exchanging information optimizing information maintaining things stable well, that's I think is a is a great idea. You see that it can change your way to see the world. The world we are all set on competition, 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 collaboration. It's a very different thing. So you see one word, holobiont, and your way of seeing the world changes. Maybe it won't work for you, or it will. For me, it worked. It gave me another kind of vision, another kind of understanding, not just of uh, humans, but everything, everything is connected. It's, uh, and even about Gaia, the goddess.